sup sup everyone now just let me get one thing out of the way first right like i feel like some people want to hear absolutes what i mean by that is it's either one way or the other you might see the title of this video see the thumbnail and you're like of course that's a knee-jerk reaction of course it's power creep of course kafka is designed to power creep jing man it's in the data right like i saw this video that uh kafka is just outperforming jing yuan e0 free to play weapon it's not even a question uh, is of course that's the absolute statement people are looking for it seems like to me that people don't want to open this discussion to talk about it a little bit more let's say what if they were e0 s1 what if uh e1 s1 e2 s1 e2 s2 stuff like that and of course talking about the potential future updates that will benefit both or one of these units even more so there are going to be changes if you guys understand how whole reverse designs their games a lot of the times it could be many patches down the line when something comes out and suddenly it revitalizes an old underplayed unit so to just come out and say kafka is power creeping jing yuan they're going crazy with the scaling like okay even e0 free to play weapon comparison she is not like that much better than him now some people might say walrus what the hell are you talking about she's like a 25 30 percent better than him like how is that not a power creep the thing is jing yuan has so much of his power built into his light cone this is the thing that it's gonna get a little more difficult to explain this because Hoyoverse by designing the light cone system to be a 75 25 ratio right there's a much higher chance for you to actually land the light cones as compared to something like genshin impact what ended up happening is it's actually incentivizing more people to even give this feature a try this is not like oh my god I, light cones are just completely out of reach for all free-to-play players i can say for certain that there are free-to-play players right now who probably has character signature light cones for limited characters not even standard banner characters, limited characters because not only can you get lucky but when you do get lucky it's a 75 to 25 ratio so i think it's although it's not like fair to completely say we should always include the light cone but for certain characters we should absolutely include the light cone and jing yuan is one of those units it, like if you are using jing yuan on a free to play like four star light cone you are not getting good value out of this character especially for a character that's scaling off of crit rate crit damage as compared to kafka who scales mostly just off of attack i mean crit ratios do matter a tiny bit for her but you can for the most part not care too much about it okay this is why jing yuan feels so underwhelming at e0 free-to-play weapon because most of his free-to-play weapons don't really lean into where he really needs the power good crit rate crit damage ratio so my jing yuan has 84.6 122.2 by no means is he insane i think i have a little bit too much crit rate in fact i would probably drop maybe 10% maybe even 20% crit rate and add 40% give or take crit damage is usually supposed to be a 1 to 2 ratio but doesn't matter right now my Jing Yuan feels very comfortable he's very consistent but the only problem with Jing Yuan is his built-in mechanic where one of the issue is his lightning lord does not generate him any energy which just just blows my mind now after playing some of these other units that have come out like kafka's follow-up attacks right whenever she does her joint attack with her teammate she, she regenerates energy like what gives and apart from that jing yuan getting cc'd also delaying the lightning lord that's just like bam that seals the deal this unit is fundamentally flawed it's fundamentally flawed i don't even care about more damage i just want him to feel more fluid more comfortable to to play i think in terms of damage like it's not that big of a deal right moc is by no means difficult moc right now like if you're gonna compare it to genshin i don't think moc 10 is as difficult as uh, genshin floor 12 it's not that difficult of a task 
to say, oh, I, I have to beat MLC 10 and I'm like really struggling. Like, no, no you're not. Like, most people shouldn't be if you're day one player and you have fully invested into your characters. So what am I getting at in this video? Is there power creep? I don't think there is power creep, right? In my mind, what power creep really means is that once this character drops, the previous character should not be in contention at any point in the game ever, bar none, period, character's dead. You, you will never ever see this character come back. It's such an insurmountable power difference. Oftentimes in previous games, I've seen like sometimes the power creep is basically like almost double the damage. Sometimes like 60, 70% of the damage is very common. Sometimes it's like a new mechanic as well. Like games will do this. They'll design a new enemy mechanic and you need the new character to deal with the new mechanic. So far, I think if you're comparing Jing Yuan and Kafka at E0S1, as I personally think you should do that for Jing Yuan, to, to, ha to have it be a fair comparison and i know free to play is gonna be like oh, I, I i don't i don't have the freaking resources to pull s1 for jing yuan like well sure okay but we're trying to evaluate characters on a more fair scale because kafka with no need for crit crit damage you, you, like, you can just roll her with whatever and she's gonna be good and that's what i said in my previous was like she's a really good free to play friendly character you can pull a kafka and just roll with it you cannot just pull a jing yuan and just roll with it he gets outdone by so many other units in the game like as a with his free to play weapons he's not that good in comparison to some of the other units available dps units that is in the game right so e0 s1 is a more fair comparison and even then jing yuan is still losing to kafka so that's what i'm saying it's like i'm not saying he's better i'm just saying that a lot of the people who are trying to paint this narrative is like oh complete power cream utter destruction dead character delete him from the game or like he needs a severe buffing for him to even be like it's not that bad now yes I also know that uh, there has been videos, people like Mr. Poke, I know the guy, he's made videos showcasing that Weld can even out DPS Jing Yuan, but uh, again, Jing Yuan's main issue is due to his character mechanic, in my opinion, it's not like strictly, like he, he just takes too long to do stuff. And he's so, and so much of his damage is put into his Lightning Lord. Like yeah, his ult does something, his like, skill does something but like, compared to his lightning lord that's nothing i would say take maybe 20 percent of the lightning lord's damage put it back into his kit and he'll start feeling like a much more balanced unit and also make sure the lightning lord has independent move order and cc gauge don't tie him to jing yuan like oh, that is so bizarre to me and like god have him generate some energy for the guy as well there's so much that we can talk about the adjusting Jing Yuan as opposed to just straight up buffing him out the ass cheek like oh give him 20 more damage on the lightning lord give him like less energy requirement to use his ultimate make him have higher base speed higher like come on like look like my Jing Yuan has 3197 attack and the guy isn't even like fully kitted out like this sp sphere is still freaking purple uh this boot is only at level nine there's some more optimizations i can do with stats and whatnot like this is so much to do this doesn't even have a crit damage like <laughs> it's just like this jinyuan is by no means well built that's what i'm trying to say okay but i can safely say that my jinyuan right now feels comparable to kafka it's not just a clear wash if you guys see the footage that i've been showing on screen jinyuan can definitely still tussle with some of the best it's just that he's very awkward to play and that awkwardness yes does lead to him being bad at dps because his dps is very back loaded like if you guys look at turn orders oftentimes even though your turn order has gone but because the lightning lord hasn't gone yet it kind of bleeds into the next turn cycle so that's where a lot of people would also be like oh he's taking forever to clear the content that's true i agree with you guys i'm like i never said that these problems don't exist like you guys have to understand the difference between saying that jing yuan is better than kafka and jing yuan has issues i'm saying he has issues he's worse than kafka kafka is better yes but 
stop painting the narrative that it's this power creep that makes Jing Yuan completely irrelevant from the game. That's just disingenuous. You're misleading a lot of people. And you're actually pushing for a narrative in the game that's not necessarily healthy for newer players to come in and hear this. Like now it's power creeping Jing Yuan, who's literally a character from two patches ago. What gives? What if like next patch Kafka gets power creep? And then patch, right? Don't paint this narrative. Don't make it sound like that this is the route the game's going down because it's not. I guarantee you it's not. Hoyoverse has figured out a formula to make a lot of money through reruns of old characters and just straight up killing one of the hottest dudes that they have in the game as of now that's really shooting themselves in the foot here like holy verse is not gonna do that one of the main reasons why blade and kafka just had to be slightly better is because of the timing that they're released at when the game first came out holy verse relied a lot on hype and excitement and people just not thinking with their head to, to just go crazy with the spending and that's exactly what happened Sile, jing yuan both of these banners sold themselves they don't need to do anything but right now imagine if kafka came out and she's not even as good as jing yuan who the hell is going to pull on the banner sure like people are like oh even if she heals but comparatively it's going to be much worse right so of course they have to level her up just a little bit in comparison to some of the other units in the game to give people an ample enough reason apart from just crazy hot sexy mama waifu which she is and a lot of people will pull her just for that but i guarantee you making her stronger than jing yuan comparable to blade and just slightly worse than sile really boosts this i'm gonna say it's gonna be making them an extra cool couple millions who doesn't want that right so you gotta understand they had to do this because they can't like solely rely on excitement and hype to sell these characters sure they could take that chance and gamble be like oh my god look how much they love her we dropped a bomb of pv for her people are going crazy for her they're gonna go nuts and just, like spend hundreds of dollars sure they could try to rely on that but why not just give her a little boost a little more to make sure that hey she's good she's a really solid character you're not gonna regret pulling for her hey like she's better than jing yuan that's the perfect sweet spot Right, so please stop saying power creep is happening it is not happening not yet anyways and truth be told i don't think it's gonna come anytime soon i'm looking forward to maybe future jing yuan getting a more dedicated artifact set or perhaps a better support roster of units that kind of leans more into his strength i don't know maybe it's just all copium belief I do think he's still a pretty good character. He's not amazing. I would say Kafka is starting to feel amazing. Sile is spectacular. And Blade is right up there around Kafka level. Both of them feels very good to play. All right. Does feel a little bad that Jing Yuan is kind of like <laughs> on the tier with the standard banner characters now, in my opinion. But hey, like if you have him, you have him. He's still going to completely crush the game. But thank you guys so much for watching. What do you guys think? Do you guys really think Kafka is here to power creep Jing Yuan? And do you think that Jing Yuan is just dead? Like this character has no chance of revival? Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Till then, urge you to stay safe. Peace, peace. Bye bye.